Have you ever had a relative with whom you'd like to have a good relationship, but who always leaves you feeling drained? Relative or not, if they catch you in a moment of vulnerability, they'll metaphorically pounce on you with their teeth bared. To put it bluntly, Marshall's mother is an emotional vampire, and that's a significant focus in the Fiona and Cake episode, The Star. This episode gives us our best insight into why Marshall struggles with relationships. More on that later. More specifically, The Star is the episode where we see what happens when Marshall does his absolute best to stay on his mother's good side. I am going to do my best, and if I'm being 100% honest, my best is probably not good enough. Marshall is first introduced in episode 1 as the world's best unknown musician. He possibly spent the night in Fiona's tour bus and later is crashing in her apartment while she's out. Ironically, his mother owns Fiona's apartment, yet Marshall seems to be living without a fixed address. Basically, he's a drifter, the stereotypical laid-back artist, a performer who goes wherever the music takes him. In fact, music is so instinctive for him that, in the finale, he literally tries to defeat the dimension-hopping maniac known as Scarab by playing a guitar solo at him. In some ways, he's the opposite of the hyper-ambitious, hyper-organized Gary Prince. In other ways, they have a lot in common. Gary, like Marshall, is introduced in episode 1 as an artist, engaged in the delicate flourishes of latte art. Gary's other passion is making pastries. In a way, the pastries are Marshall's first introduction to Gary. Marshall gets one of Gary's pastries from Fiona and falls in love with the exquisite taste. By the episode The Star, Marshall and Gary are a couple, and Marshall has patched things up with his mother and introduced Gary to her wealthy investor friends. Gary brings up his baking project, The Pastry Mentions, to a guest at the elite soiree held by Marshall's mother and quickly finds himself surrounded by intrigue intrigued potential investors. But as the soiree progresses, Marshall's mother takes the opportunity to humiliate him with a speech about how basically he's an ungrateful son who should show her more respect and it ends in disaster. He can transform himself to a wolf, to a bat. In the classic Dracula story, once you enter the domain of your vampiric host, good luck escaping unharmed. Every door in the castle is closed, bolted against me. The castle of Dracula is a prison. We see something broadly similar with Marshall, where to return to his mother's orbit is to accept mockery and humiliation. In her book about toxic personalities, Don't You Know Who I Am, Dr. Ramani Dervasola writes about how children of toxic parents can grow up riddled with insecurity, believing they will be punished if they try to advocate for themselves. As adults, they often are estranged from the toxic parent or their whole family. As the good doctor puts it, they may have been forced to be self-reliant and have often succeeded in that, or the situation may have forced them into risky or suboptimal situations. In adulthood, the effects of parenting can endure as low self-esteem and trying to do too much for others. If Marshall was raised to ignore his own needs and support others at his own expense, this explains the sacrifices he makes when he realizes he can help Gary get what he wants. In response to Gary's excitement at being in a room full of big investors, Marshall's view is, it sucks, but you should enjoy yourself. All very self-sacrificing, but ultimately not productive given that the result is Gary insulting the biggest investors in the city. Part of the speech Marshall's mom gives to the investors is about how we can forgive youthful mistakes and years and years of embarrassing decisions. Which is disingenuous since she emphasizes the mistakes over the forgiveness, then demands Marshall tell the people how grateful you are. This is what prompts Gary to yell she's a bad mom and culminates in Gary and Marshall leaving with a kiss in the elevator. For me, this ending is not so much romantic as ambiguous. You could argue that by trying to push things along with the investors, Marshall inadvertently caused the premature end of Gary's dream. Maybe I'm being too harsh, and of course Marshall had good intentions, but you could argue his self-sacrificing instincts caused more harm than good. This is what I mean when I say I found the ending not so much romantic as ambiguous. 
On the surface, Marshall and Gary are opposites. Marshall is drifting through life like a tumbleweed, aimless and apathetic. Gary is powering conscientiously towards his goal, namely his 64 step plan for his own bakery. Despite this, so far they look like a good match. They're both creative and passionate, prone to impulsive action and willing to rebel against authority. Marshall obviously has rebelled against his mother by trying to detach from her emotionally draining orbit. Gary rebels by stealing kitchen time from his boss's kitchen and insulting potential investors when he tries to defend Marshall. To me, this is Fiona and Cake's most interesting relationship. The question is, can Marshall sustain a healthy close relationship given that he grew up conditioned to accept toxicity? As for Marshall's mother, we've seen that she can be vindictive and cruel. We've seen that she has not forgiven or forgotten Marshall's choice to distance himself from her. And so we can expect her to take on an antagonistic or even villainous role if she appears in season 2. Certainly I'm hoping that the hint of depth we saw with Marshall in the star is built on in future episodes. If you enjoyed my take on the relationships of the guy who tried to defeat a dimension hopping monster using a heartfelt guitar solo, you can help the channel by liking and subscribing. If you have any guesses about what we'll see from Marshall in season 2, drop those in the comments. As always, thank you to those of you who have subscribed already. Have a great week, embrace the weird and thank you for watching. Every door in the castle is closed, bolted against me. Castle Dracula is a prison.